Welcome to the ACEC Government Affairs Update for Friday, May 21st. And uh, before we get into the uh, program, I do want to uh, let everybody know that registration is open for next month's Engineering Excellence Awards, which takes place on June 17th as a virtual broadcast at 3 p.m. Eastern. All you have to do is go to acec.org, and on the homepage you'll see a uh, banner headline for the event. And it's going to be great. I mean, really, we, we the second time we've done a virtual event for EEA, it is like a television broadcast with some live elements to it. Um, really fantastic presentation. Ross Schaefer, as always, is going to be our MC. Um, some messages from uh, from our CEO, Linda Bauer-Dar, and, of course, our board chair, Robin Greenleaf, and just a fantastic program uh, celebrating the best achievements in engineering and uh, a great virtual platform online, which is going to be uh, uh, very interactive. And, and, and I think it's worth the time to sit back and, and watch a nice broadcast uh, showcasing everything great in our industry. Again, that's June 17th at 3 p.m. Eastern's broadcast. Uh, $40 to register, so it's not not all that much. It's a, a couple of Starbucks coffees. Um, and uh, it's a great event and, uh, you know, help out the industry and help out uh, uh, your, your, your fellow colleagues in the industry and, and cheer them on. So uh, EEA coming up soon. Matt Reifer is joining us today from uh, the ACEC advocacy team. Of course, Matt is bird dogging our infrastructure work and work on the PPP program. Uh, he just got off a call before coming on the program on that very issue on the FAR credits clause. But uh, really, today we want to focus in on what is happening with infrastructure. Uh, what's the status right now with the negotiations going on between the House, the Senate, the White House, um, and and just where do we stand and, and what does the future look like? So, Matt, thanks for coming on. Yeah, it's my pleasure. It's good to be with you again, Jeff. Yeah, and, and, and you know what has changed since we last spoke? Uh, where where are things? Uh, where are things right now? So no uh, visible, you know, very public or high profile. Uh, advancements or agreements between the administration and congressional leaders, particularly, you know, Senate Republicans have sort of taken on the, the mantle of, of leadership for negotiating with the administration over the size and scope uh, of infrastructure. And those conversations are continuing. There were uh, another series of meetings between uh, Republican leaders on the key committees of jurisdiction and key administration officials, uh, including uh, Secretary Buttigieg of Transportation and Gina Raimondo uh, there, uh, as well as the uh, Oval Office meetings with congressional leaders. Uh, and they keep talking about, you know, what they can live with, you know, what are obstacles from their perspective uh, in terms of the size, the scope, you know, the revenues. Uh, I, I think one thing that's positive right now is they're trying to focus on areas of agreement, finding those uh, common areas where there's significant crossover between, you know, what the, what the Republicans put in their proposal and what is in the administration's jobs plan uh, and sort of build from there. What can we agree on in, you know, capital programs, sort of traditional infrastructure sectors, transportation, water, uh, you know, broadband deployment and the like, uh, and then and then go from there. So we're encouraged by that. The negotiations are, are slow. Again, not a lot of sort of visible high profile agreement yet, uh, but they keep trading ideas and suggestions and, and, and things, you know, continue to progress. So we're we're optimistic about that. It's good that they're meeting on areas of mutual interest and cooperation. That means that it's not dead in the water. They're trying to kind of figure out what they can agree on first, get that kind of hammered out, and then start talking about the things that might create a little bit more of a um, of an issue uh, when Correct. you start digging into things. Yeah, that's absolutely right. And look, we you know we've seen reports this week. Uh, there are folks on the progressive left who are you know, running out of patience. They're skeptical, I'd say, about the willingness of their counterparts in the Republican Party to negotiate in good faith. Uh, so there's certainly going to be increasing pressure as negotiations continue uh, to either fish or cut bait. You know, uh, But look, the, the reality remains 
the margins in the House and Senate are incredibly thin. I mean, there's there's not a sort of broad governing majority here in, in either the House or the Senate. So I, I continue to believe in order to get something significant done, there has an infrastructure, there has to be bipartisan negotiation and cooperation. Yes, yeah, the only way forward. And it's it's historically been a fairly bipartisan issue to begin with, and it brings both sides of the table together to talk. That usually extends to the floor when a vote happens. Uh, we saw that with the water bill recently in the Senate. Um, you know, it was just a uh, a uh, an overwhelming uh, victory uh, for the water bill. And when we start talking about uh, service transportation and infrastructure, that generally follows suit. Exactly. Yeah, the, the other two big developments this week, uh, the Chairman Carper at the Senate Environment and Public Works Committee has indicated they would like to you know, unveil and mark up their pieces of the reauthorization bill, the highway components of a transportation bill, as early as next week. Uh, it continues to negotiate with Senator Capito, the Republican leader from uh, West Virginia on the committee. Uh, and you know, I think they're working collaboratively in a bipartisan way to try to reach agreement on that bill. But yeah, he's always had a goal of moving something before Memorial Day and is continuing to try to stick with that. Yeah, and, and that's, the other sign, yeah. Uh, sorry, the other sign of good faith here on the House side, Republicans on the Transportation Infrastructure Committee rolled out their proposal for a surface transportation bill called the Starter Act. I got the acronym here in front of me. The Surface Transportation Advanced Through Reform Technology and Efficient Review, the Starter Act. Uh, this is a, a, a the 2.0 version from a bill they introduced last year. 400 billion uh, over five years uh, for highway and transit and safety programs uh, that move through the committee's jurisdiction. So that uh, a, a big number, a significant increase over existing programs, uh, really focused on core traditional formula programs and highway and transit and looking at ways to facilitate more efficient project delivery and mm -hmm. streamlining environmental reviews and, you know, advancing developments and new technologies, those sorts of priorities. And, the, you know, the, I had a briefing with them today and they basically said, look, this is our, you know, good faith offer. They want to be at the table negotiating with their Democratic counterparts on the committee. They've identified where their priorities are. They put out a product, you know, and they want to they want to have those bipartisan negotiations uh, yeah. over transportation, which is, you know, to their credit. Yeah, absolutely. And, and the interesting thing about, you know, the minority's um, proposal, you know, usually you think, well, OK, that's great. The, the minority put out a proposal, um, but that's not going to go anywhere because, the, you know, the majority in the, in the committee is going to push that forward. Yeah, generally, OK, you, you can make that argument. But what you don't know is what's going to happen when it reaches the floor and how much of the Republican um, proposal, counter proposal is going to make it into amendment debate and how much of a change happens on the floor. Um, and that's, of course, yet to be seen that you can't really prognosticate that. But it's important to look at the Republican proposal because of uh, uh, how it could affect whatever whatever comes out in the final package and potentially during markup and depending on the amendment process and markup correct and and even in the the conference committee process you know later on down the line and and ranking member sam graves from missouri has has been very clear uh that he's negotiating or collaborating very closely with senator capito his republican counterpart in the senate uh, so that she's aware of their priorities. So yeah, even if even if the House decides to move a partisan bill, that work product is still there. Uh, and if a bipartisan process moves forward in the Senate uh, and then comes back through the House in the conference process, yeah, they have a they have working ideas there, legislative proposals on the table uh, that could be pulled from, as you said, you know, in in amendments and modifications to whatever moves forward. Yeah, so it's important to kind of keep abreast on everything that's kind of moving um, on both sides of the aisle in both chambers because they're all they're all very important. They can impact the final product. Um, how how have um, to your knowledge have you heard anything on how the earmarks in uh, the House are affecting timetables on uh, any of these bills? In fact, yeah, there was an article today, uh, a statement from Chairman DeFazio that. 
part of the reason their markup process got kicked to June, it doesn't look like they're going to be able to move forward next week, is uh, the time it's taking them to review all of the earmark requests that were filed by, by members of the House to their committee and to vetting those and making sure all the documentation is in place and then compliant with the committee's guidelines. Um, uh, again, you know, I, to me, this is a good news story uh, that there's significant member interest in, you know, projects in their district. Uh, and if they've got a skin in the game, that only bolsters the, the prognosis for, uh, you know, getting a big bill done that, that they can demonstrate to their constituents, you know, this is what we're getting out of this package. Here's the things that are going to be happening in and around our area in, in terms of development. And the fact that they have a process and they're sticking with it, um, which is the big issue going into the earmark question was, are you going to have a process? Is it going to be limited, transparent? Is it going to be very focused? And it seems as though they're willing to slow down to ensure that the process is, uh, is adhered to. So that's that's also a good uh, good government side of the story. And uh, you know, I was on a call with a few members this afternoon, uh, and they were uh, members of the, of the committee, and they were touting... Um, the earmark request that they had submitted, uh, you know, as an example of their their advocacy and their work on the committee. Uh, so, yeah, I know a lot of members are eager to get that process started again. I can, you know, from experience, you know, just uh, Matt, you and I both worked in Congress. We know that nothing makes a member more more pleased than to be able to tout back in the district a project that will help, you know, inject some economic development, create jobs, and help um, the constituents of that district. Um, that's why earmarks are so important, it's because it does allow a member to localize and, and, and show the voters back home that the work that he's doing or she's doing actually translates into action instead of it being a headline on, on, on CNN or Fox News. Exactly. Uh, exactly. And, and rather than yeah, fighting over uh, formulas or arcane policies that don't resonate, um, yeah, specific projects, you know, list of things that are going to happen, that gets attention. Yep, absolutely. Well, again, Matt, I appreciate you taking the time today. Uh, this has been a, a great, uh, great update on where things stand with infrastructure. And we're just going to keep our... Uh, our nose to the grindstone on this and, and maintain our, our, our active uh, advocacy on the issue. So uh, stay tuned for more. And uh, from now, this has been your Government Affairs Update for May 21, 2021. See you next time.